It's a brand new day, hey. Take a good day, make it great, okay. Welcome to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Join us each week, no matter where you find yourself, physically or spiritually, as we share real conversations that are relevant to believers today. We want to help you experience and incorporate God in your life, not just on Sundays, but every day. Let's join the conversation now. It's a brand new day. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Let's Chat. I hope you're having a great day. I have no idea when you're listening to this because that's the beauty of a podcast, but I hope it's beautiful outside. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Whether you're uh, on your morning drive to work, evening ride home, making lunch for the kids, on the trail, whatever you're doing, folding laundry for the 19th time this week, I don't know. But I, I'm thankful that through this avenue, we get to get to celebrate together what God is doing and have a conversation surrounding the Lord. So I also want to welcome back my brother, Josh. Josh was away last week. You had a great vacation. Yes. And I want to make sure that Josh is ready because he's had a little, we had a break with Litch Chat. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you know what today is, Josh? <laughs> Today's a great day. <laughs> I hope you heard that. <laughs> Our goal is starting maybe next week, Josh getting a mic because we need that in this podcast. But today is a good day. Yeah. It's a great day. Uh, every day is a great day. If you have Jesus, you have everything you need. So we hope you're having a great day in him. All right. So we started this new series last week. It was a blast. Uh, it's called Share the Joy in the Summer and with everything going on in our world. Man, we need more joy flowing through the body of Christ and through our individual lives. So we're talking to brothers and sisters in Christ whom I've gotten to know through our church. Other people have referred to me who simply, who simply exude the joy of the Lord. Um, it's going to be fun hearing their testimonies. What about them uh, allows them to operate with that joy? And I hope through this series, it empowers all of us more than, more than ever to step into that area that, man, we're called in Scripture. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.16, rejoice always. No matter what you're going through your life, you can still rejoice in the Lord. So we're hoping that occurs through this series. Last week, we started off with my brother, John Peter Savage. As I said, I should call him Mr. Peter Savage. He taught me fifth grade at South Fayette. 75 years young. Uh, serving all over the church, uh, helping folks uh, view cars, transport them uh, around their cars at Calusi Chevrolet only because he wants to engage strangers with the gospel. I mean, it was just a fun conversation. I hope you were encouraged by him. And uh, I'm excited as today, I guess we're on a teacher run to start because <laughs> I have now a sister in Christ who is a teacher, but more than that, uh, like I said, she's my sister in Christ, my friend, and a partner in ministry here at the Bible Chap as well, Allison Cummings. Allison, welcome to Let's Chat. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, I think the person who's most excited about this episode is my eight-year-old daughter, Faith Rebecca DiDonato. Faithy. <laughs> Faithy, as we call her. She knows Mrs. Cummings well at her school uh, in, uh, in Hills with uh, Cannon Mac, and I told her this morning, guess who I'm interviewing today while well, she was waking up still. And uh, she's like, Mrs. Cummings? I like, yes. <laughs> this is and for I her. Prom I promised her that you and I would work her name in. So we, that, that didn't take very long. Yeah, we got you, Faith. We got you, Faith. Faith, love you. We but love now, you. But now we need to move on, honey, okay? <laughs> so appreciate you. And uh, obviously, Tim, married. You're coming up uh, August will be 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. Two beautiful daughters. Uh, we have Marin, who's eight. Yep. And May, who's six, right? Yep. And uh, if you see the Cummings, they are all over the place serving in our church, and their daughters are always with them. We'll, we'll get to that. And this is fun because you've been serving in the church for many years. We'll get to that. But you just came on staff to help with the outreach ministry. So... Uh, I can call you my coworker. Yeah, the all staff, these things. Right? We have a resume now. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We are building that resume. All right. So I love this first part of the podcast because I know you. Uh, and I even told Allison what I love about this weekly podcast is, yeah, there's a lot of work to make it happen. Uh, my brother Josh does most of that work on the edit size to fix my mistakes. But with that, um, I'm getting to know 
our body better. Like I've known you, I've known Tim, we've talked, we've interacted outside of uh, the church, but through this time in our conversation yesterday and today, man, I love getting to know you better. Now I want the church to get to know you better. So just share a little bit of your background, personally, spiritually, uh, many probably don't know. You actually are a product of the Bible Chapel <laughs> growing up here. Talk about your family, mom and dad history, Tim and your family, and just um, as I learned how that family experience really shaped your view and relationship of the Lord. So. Big, broad question. Tell us about Allison Cummings a little bit. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited uh, to share my story. Um, and uh, so, yes, born and bred uh, in middle school, I came to the Bible Chapel. Yeah. So we were um, raised in the church. Uh, I have um, two brothers, okay. um, the rose between two thorns, just, uh, just no like wonder. Faith. That, just I like didn't Faith. I know that. Yeah. That's so why I am you connect so well. Makes the rose. Sense. Yep. So I have an older brother um, and I have a younger brother, uh, Joe and Mark. Um, and we were raised, uh, we grew up in Bethel Park um, and just had um, a loving mother. Mm -hmm. um, we did not, uh, we grew up without a, a father. Okay. Um, my, my brother still kept in contact, but I, um, my dad did not want anything to do with me. Mm. Um, so that was hard. Yeah. Um, that was hard. So I, um, my mom did absolutely everything she could possibly do to provide for us um, and a public servant uh, herself, mm. um, but just always did whatever we needed to um, to get what we needed. Provide and yeah. as a single mom, we have so many blessed single parents here who um, I think like myself and Kristen, you and Tim, now you got to live it as a child, but the weight of carrying two roles and trying to raise up your kids, making sure they're doing the right things. Man, the heavy, the heavy weight of that. But I love that your mom got you to church, made sure that was a yes, priority. Yes, absolutely. It was a priority and it was a big thing. Um, my grandmother was one who was praying from the first thing in the morning to the last thing at night. And just, uh, we knew we were always covered in prayer. Mm. Um, and just, uh, we just appreciate that um, foundation that was laid yeah. uh, before um, we, came to the Bible Chapel. Yeah. So then um, we came to the Bible Chapel um, and uh, I was in middle school and so was my younger brother. So we got to experience the John Fowler days yeah. of, of a youth group. And it was uh, really what laid that foundation yeah. um, coming from uh, a Lutheran church, just the drastic difference. Yeah. Um, but we absolutely absorbed it and loved it um, and are still here today. Yes. Uh, I met Tim uh, when I was in college, so my junior year in college in the summer. I met Tim um, and it has been one of the biggest blessings in my life mm. uh, to not have, um, not yeah. ever being daddy's little girl. Um, I do know that I'm daddy's little girl in, mm. in Jesus' eyes. Yeah, uh, right. You know, I, I have that piece, right. um, but God knew exactly what he was doing when he gave me Tim. Mm. Um, and, and then having two girls, yeah. um, you know, I thought I was for sure a boy mom. I yeah. thought I'm gonna be, you know, we didn't find out the gender, I'm gonna be a boy mom. Yeah. Like I just, it, 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 it's, that's what it is. I think I'd be a better boy mom, but God knew well before, mm -hmm. well before I did that I was even <laughs> pregnant that he was gonna bless us with Marin and May. And yeah. um, I really see how God has used Tim to mm. be that pillar in our family, yeah. um, to provide for for Marin and May to yeah. just have to be daddy's little girl. Mm. Um, well, I can't so, imagine the uh, the blessing it is to see Tim love your well your marriage first, but to love your girls. And honestly, every day you get to experience the blessing they're receiving. That to be honest, you did not have from a dad, but but because of your relationship with Christ and right, your security to him, it allows you to not probably as much go back to what you did not have, but more just appreciate what your girls have. A hundred percent. And I think that that, like we had, we were talking, you know, I've been able to close that door, that that yeah. is the past mm. and moving forward and just realizing how blessed we are every single day. Right. Um, and thanking God for for my husband and the, the girls that he's blessed us with, yeah. because it's, it really comes full circle. Comes it full really circle. came full circle for me. That's beautiful. All right, so 
that is just so critical to understand because when we talk about, you know, those in the church who are operating with the joy of the Lord, it doesn't mean their whole life was perfect, right? There's a recipe out there that, I mean, you went through, um, for lack of a better words, you could put it in the category of a broken home with a father not present. Yeah. A mom who loved you guys, raised you up, made sure you're in the church, and we praise God for that. Um, we praise God. God, that at a young age, he drew you to himself, yeah. right? To find your identity Amen in him. To that. But it's not like everything was roses for Allison that gives you their joy. So it's it's good to hear that background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and it has definitely helped form me mm -hmm. uh, into who I am. And right. it's it's all part of the story. It's all part it of the story. definitely is part of the story. And yep. I love it. So uh, an aspect of mine, you know, I was talking about uh, um, last week with John. You're another one in this category for me as the church. When Allison Cummings walks in the building, she's got a lot of energy, even though she drinks decaf coffee. <laughs> Although we gave her regular today, Josh. Yeah, we. I don't might, know if that was smart. We might be in trouble. Tim, we apologize <laughs> when your wife can't sleep tonight. Um, so we, when you come in with an energy and a smile about you, but not just that. When we go to Hills Henderson, where our kids are in school, as is just leaving, going to mm -hmm. intermediate, but. Uh, Allison's the same way. Mrs. Cummings is smiling. You can hear her voice if she notices you <laughs> down the hall. You're operate with this upbeat joy. But part of that is connected to your commitment to service. It just seems to flow that way. John was the same way. That joy of the Lord produced in him a natural heart to serve. And I see that in you as well. We just hit this this past weekend on on our calling and responsibility as the body of Christ that we're all called to play our part in serving. Now, uh, for you, I just wanna ask you, when it comes to just, you know, I notice it, your heart to serve, um, and you've done some big projects for us. I think of the magnitude of Caring Tree that we, we do every year, and you and Tim and the girls have taken that on. What drives Allison Cummings to serve? Has it always been a part of who you are, or has God kind of shaped that over time? So I definitely feel like um, we have a, we, we say we're the public servant family. Yeah. Um, my mom was a nurse. Um, okay. My brothers, um, my older brother is a firefighter and EMT um, in Maryland. And my younger brother is in training um, to do the same. Okay. So as a teacher, I always feel like we have been yeah. public servants and right. just um, mm. that has, that has been, I feel like shaped who we, who we are. Yeah. Um, and I feel like even my older brothers have been in desk jobs and they're like, this isn't the calling, you mm. know, I need to serve. Um, and uh, so I definitely feel like that has been ingrained in us. Yeah. Uh, we, we watched my mom do that. Mm. Um, and I think that that is something that we have absorbed, might right. be in our DNA. Right. Um, so I definitely feel like that even before, like I think back to high school when we were thinking, talking about this and how I was involved in student government and yeah. just would be at school at 6.30 in the morning to to make sure that the donuts were out for sale, <laughs> to like being there to, to help with all the things that I feel like giving has always been something mm. I would rather give than receive. Mm. Um, and that has definitely been part of who, who yeah, I am. Um, right. Like you've learned, it's really hard for me to talk about myself yeah, because it is- you and John the same way. I'm like, you have to talk about yourself. I know you guys are humble, but come on, we need it, yeah, encourage yeah, the body. But it is definitely, I would rather be the one either behind the scenes helping right. to make sure that, um, you know, just again, for the glory of God, yeah. uh, first and foremost. I was uh, gonna say that, so in the church, since I've known you, you've always been serving and not just, not just reluctantly, I would say that can happen, <laughs> but eager to serve, stretching yourself to serve. What about the church specifically that uh, draws you to serve? Yeah, so our, um, it was, we had, um, I had helped with Caring Tree before mm -hmm. taking it over, yeah. um, before Denise had moved on. Yeah. Um, and uh, I feel like it's always been, um, I love being a teacher, but there's part of me that just loves using that other half of my brain. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's planning things or just doing those things that I don't necessarily get to do following a curriculum yeah. and can think outside the box. So I think I love that it is, that's the great thing about the Bible Chapel. There is something for everyone. Yeah, right. Whether you are just content opening the door yeah. at the playground side yeah. and welcoming people on a yeah. Sunday morning, or you are ready to lead. Own a big ministry project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that, uh, so going back, outreach is uh, doing the caring tree yep. has always been. I remember working with you when you were out yeah, in Wilkinsburg, Wilkinsburg and we were making yep. sure that all those kids had pajamas. Yep. Um, and it was just something that, uh, 
Tim and I could do together, uh, my yeah. family could do together. Um, and that grew, um, you know, just the ministries over the years. We used yeah. to just have two ministries and now we're up to seven. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, and it is so cool. Um, to now, my, my girls are already asking because we have neighbors cutting out angels <laughs> ready to go for Christmas. So just like- Christmas in July is happening as yes. we speak, the <laughs> yes. prep involved, wow. We are ready to roll, um, but it's just a great way that, um, yeah. we both just think that our kids seeing us serving mm. um, is is vital yeah. to them right. as pe people, growing yeah. as people, as well as, you know, growing in their faith, yeah. um, that this is what it's all about. Right. I love that we hit caring tree a little bit there and um if those who don't know what it is new at the chapel it's a tremendous local outreach where we partner with local organizations to really help underprivileged children experience christmas and part of that is a practical gift that they receive uh but also through it we want to be able to engage them somehow with the gospel and with Jesus. And so as you said, when I was in Wilkinsburg for five and a half years, we partnered with the Boys and Girls Club and other other outreaches. And I remember, I mean, the ease you made it for us that we would simply get the names of the children we wanted to bless. And we, we literally give you a list of names. And then you guys take it. Like you say, you're cutting out hundreds of angels. You're putting gifts based off gender and age. You're, or asking the body to pick up these angels. Yep take them and you're trusting they're going to bring that gift back yeah. we hope and pray. Time, and pray praying that they bring those angels back and then you have all the wrapping involved with that yeah and then the distribution of that i mean it is a big operation and were there were ever times where you wondered throughout the years i don't know if i can do this again like this year is going to be hard but yeah. then then what made you keep doing it though in those tough tough years yeah, so we, um, and I love that over the years, it's grown that we have had children, but now we've opened it to the McGuire home yeah. where there are special needs and right. there's adults all the way up yeah. through right. um, in their 60s and 70s that unless we provide these gifts, they're not going to receive anything. Mm. Um, so, and we love seeing those pictures after that drive us, yeah. you know, thank you so much because otherwise they wouldn't have something to open. Oh. Um, and we did, we have had, um, about, um, I guess it would be four years ago, we did have that year where we said, I don't think we can do this. Um, our youngest, May, um, had fallen and um, incidentally through um, her fall, we had found that she has a malformation where her brain and her spine meet. Hmm. And this had happened in November and this was when everything was kicking up, um, planning for Caring Tree. Um, and we were just exhausted, yeah. um, you know, trying to, to figure out what was the best care, you know, traveling out of state for for her for appointments um, and just making sure that she was taken care of. Um, yeah. And I'm so blessed because my husband said, we can do this. Mm. We can do this. Uh, he's my biggest cheerleader. I'm really <laughs> blessed. He is, he's my biggest cheerleader. And, and if you get to know Tim, uh, you're the more outgoing <laughs> and uh, hey everyone! Yeah, Tim's, Tim's there with you, serving and smiling. Yeah. Uh, which you're such a good combo. And he, yeah, he he's the uh, <laughs> si he likes to he likes to do the labor. He's the, yes. the laborer. He's he will carry all of the the gifts wherever they yeah. need to go. But he um hmm. he's my biggest cheerleader, and hmm. I I love him. So you him. guys say that we're gonna do it. Yeah. And uh, man, what a what a again example that we talked about just with your kids that has been throughout the years. I wanna come back to that in a moment. Um, you know, I like asking our guests this, um, obviously all of us should be motivated just based off the gospel to serve the Lord, right? The fact that what we started these podcasts off with, today is a good day because of Jesus, that's not, that is our phrase at Let's Chat, but it's real. Like if you've, you've been transformed from the pit of hell to the glory of heaven because of Christ, man, I wanna operate with joy every day and wanna serve him. But it's a grind sometimes. And praise God, we have his word yeah. that also encourages us and challenges us and calls us uh, to operate with joy. So I wanna ask you, are there any uh, Bible verses uh, that come to mind to you that have always impacted you in regard to sharing the joy of the Lord and operating with the joy of the Lord? Yeah, so whenever you asked me, I thought, oh my goodness, my favorite verse right now. <laughs> it is all about pure joy. Um, and it's James 1, 2, um, and I love this uh, this version where it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whether you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Mm. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Mm. 
Amen. So good. Um, so good. Just, you know, a reference I feel like to my past. Yeah. That, um, there were difficult days. Uh, and, there you were know, trials, yeah. There were trials, um, and we we all face trials every single day, yes. uh, whether it's a health diagnosis with yourself or your kids, yeah. um, or you lose lose a father-in-law, yeah. like we just recently did. Um, mm. The days are hard, like yeah. days can be hard. Um, it doesn't have to be a health diagnosis for it to be a hard day. Yeah. I'm sure Kristen knows, sometimes these days are long when you have your <laughs> kids at home and yes. you have 30 of your own, uh, 30 other kids in, in a classroom that will listen to you sometimes better than your <laughs> own too. Um, listen kids, we're gonna start giving you grades at home. Yeah. <laughs> you could get expelled if yeah. you don't do well. Yeah. Principal's off. Yeah, there we go. We hope you're enjoying Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow as we release new episodes every week. Now, let's get back to the conversation. It's a brand new day. Take a good day, make it great, okay? You know, there's so many verses you could go to, but that's one you cling to, which is involving trials. And uh, we're actually going to, you know, give you the first uh, tease of the fall. We're getting the book of James in the fall. We're gonna have about 13 weeks diving into this amazing book from the Lord. Um, Because James is real, right? We've talked, he is raw and real, like, hey, here it is. (laughs) Yeah, he puts it out there. Puts it out there. Um, But I love the the first part of that verse, uh, trials of various kinds. Oh man, that's so right. Like sometimes it's it's a minor trial if you put it in light of others. Sometimes it's one of major magnitude. Um, But regardless of that various kind of trial, we're called to count it all joy. And I always say with that verse, I don't believe God through James is saying, find joy in the trial itself. No, find joy in what God's gonna do through it. Absolutely. Um, Same, and sometimes that's reflected joy. Meaning as a young child, I can't imagine you growing up um, and we talked about this, like when you when I first heard your story about your dad, I, I got mad. And I think that's my the flesh and uh, a little bit because of how much I love faith. And it's like, man, what if faith didn't have my love? Um, so I got mad for you yeah. going back, but yeah. but now we count it joy because what God did through that and what yeah. He's doing now through that. Yeah. Uh, not that I would want that on you or 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 a girl not to have her father, but. I can we can count a joy knowing that God produced something in that trial for you, right? Absolutely. And I just love that. Right. Would I have Tim? You know, would I yeah. have Tim and would I have That's you know point. at all just because mm. he had it all figured out. God yeah. had it all figured out before. Amen. And uh I know another one we talked about with you was Philippians four six to just not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will go your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I know that that is one that kind of is a daily motivator for you. Yeah, that peace. Yep. Having peace is is key because like you said, you want to you can get mad and you can have all these human emotions yep. that God has given us, but right. that is hard to not um and I know Tim's even said, it makes me so mad that you didn't have that, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And to me, it is what it is, you know, it is, I can't go back and change that. So I feel like I get more on the sad emotions, Mm. but there's that, there's the peace that transcends it all. And um, working it out for for the glory of God. Glory of God. All right, so I don't think we'll keep doing this in Let's Chat, which means only bringing teachers on. Okay. But it's pretty sweet that we started out with John Peter Savage. Uh, 36 years, I believe, at South Fayette. Uh, was stuck with three D Donato boys through that journey. <laughs> um, so you've been in the public school system 15 years, Canon Mac 12 or 13? Yep. Okay. All right, so how? And I'm stuck with three D Donato kids. <laughs> well, I was. This is hilarious. I did, I just, We're going yeah, full circle right. here. Man, man, it's amazing that the first two guests have joy in spite of six D Donatos at this point. All right, so. <laughs> Unlike John, who now is at Calusi Chevrolet and he has a platform to just talk Jesus 24 seven, you can't do that directly in a public school system. So talk about how do you in your setting, your work setting, still try to make it your aim to exude and share the joy of the Lord with the students and teachers? Yeah, so that is, it is true. I know how John had mentioned that he, you know, he was able to have his Bible on his desk. Different day, right? Different day, yep. way different. Yep. Uh, I couldn't even imagine which is very sad. I couldn't imagine what the repercussions would be. Um, I definitely have a devotional on my desk um, Mm. and, you know, Bible verses on my planner, Mm. um, but it's definitely different. And so I feel like 
I'm able to share the joy with students um, through being present. Um, I think back to myself and my brothers when we were going through school, um, that we had people that may or may not have knew, knew what we were going through as a family um, that really rallied around us. Mm. Um, so that's always in the back of my head is how can I love on these kids? Yeah. Um, showing the love of Jesus yeah. through making sure they feel comfortable if they need something, they can come to me. Right. Um, and the same for the staff, you know, I, what do you need? Like, mm. how can I be a servant? Um, and again, not in those words, but showing that servant um, yeah. heart I think is so vital. Um, you know, right. one of my favorite days was uh, I have Miss um, Linda Rice, who is uh, yeah. who is at our school. Um, it's great to have her and have that partner and anchor, um, and we're able to start each day. You know, knowing going yeah. deeper than the surface, yeah. um, which is amazing, um, and a couple other teachers. Um, but it is uh, one of our favorite days was Miss Linda and I were walking down the hall with Faith, and Faith had just started her um, her little. Uh, faith, uh, her faith podcast. <laughs> Growing with Faith. <laughs> Growing with Faith. Live on Instagram, <laughs> Pastor Dave DiDonato, because she's not at age yet to get her own. Once she does, she's got way more followers <laughs> than me. <laughs> Well, I'm cheering her on. So she. Yeah, that's so funny. Okay. So, so you're we were talking down the hall. about. Uh, well, and I said, Faith, um, can you tell um, Mrs. Rice what sanctification is? Yeah. Because this was one of her first. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it was just the greatest, one of the greatest moments <laughs> being able to have that conversation in the hallway because, like, in the like you said, of it's. School. Yeah, wow. it's difficult. Um, so I think I feel like my calling mm. is absolutely. Mm to be the light mm -hmm. um, and that's something we tell our kids every single day before yeah. they leave for school be the light mm. um and that's how i feel like i'm able to show jesus yeah. is not directly through slipping bible verses into people's mailboxes but just <laughs> yeah. showing them um how to be christ-like mm. or how i can be christ-like to help i love it well one thanks for doing that with thanks. faith uh lover i i say you know i think the bible chapels unique in many ways. We are blessed as a larger church that uh, in all the public schools around our community, we have Bible chapel people on staff somewhere. Yeah. And I love not only are our kids, when they're in school, typically there's at least one other family at least who's a Bible chapel mm -hmm. family. So they have a brother and sister in Christ at a young age, right? And I love, it's been amazing having uh, you and Linda there. And I always tell my kids, do you know, I can easily reach out to Mrs. Cummings or Mrs. Rice to and find you, out what's going on there. So you better. And be you hit. easily get pictures too. <laughs> yeah. But it is, you're so right. Just the Donahues, there's so many oh, great families. Oh, so, we can go through so our, many. Uh, I think the Hots were with us for a while. Oh, they yes. Moved. And then they I mean, there's so many. Us. There's so many. Yeah, we are. We are really blessed at that little school. Yeah. Um, the, the teachers are amazing. And that, um, that's, that's the... Not to get off track, but I get too excited. That's taking the church outside the walls of the building of the church into the community, into the schools, and, and being a unit together as the light of Christ. It just, it gets me excited. Yeah, yeah. and I think I told you, uh, it was just, it came full circle of being that light. Um, I had a student um, that I had my first year at Canon Mac when I taught first grade, um, invited me to her graduation party. And mm. we had randomly had kept in touch, but not consistently, and it was just, it was that yay moment of, oh, okay, awesome. I did something in this child's life to make an impact. Um, and I couldn't have done that without Jesus. You Amen. can't just do that without. Amen. Um, and so that was a full circle moment this summer, being able to attend a graduation party for one of my first students in Canon Mac that just really. That's awesome. Yeah. That is good stuff. All right, so you and Tim represent, um, I would say the, the core reach demographic of our church, meaning this. We are a multi-generational church, which I love. Like your mom, right? Your mom and you and Tim and then your girls, generations. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I praise God for that. And as a church, our focus has always been, let's reach the next generation. And we do that through reaching young families. So, you know, you guys make up the demographic that we're constantly, relentlessly going after. Um, so just talk about the importance for your generation, our generation, right? Parents of young families of making church a priority um, because it's becoming harder with all the distractions and options on the weekends and other thing to make it. But but talk about why it's a priority for you and Tim and specifically your girls 
witnessing you guys serving uh, in the church? Yeah, so that's been really cool. Like you said, I recently have um, joined staff as an outreach coordinator right. and kind of a crazy story. I was telling Dave, um, I had literally ha taken all the prerequisite classes um, to start my doctorate. Um, I was kind of in a stagnant stage, I guess, as a teacher that I thought, I can do this with my eyes closed. I love what I do, I really do, but I'm something's missing. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe going back for my doctor, it would be, you know, that just using my brain in a different way. Um, and after Caring Tree last year, Peter said, hey, what do you think about coming on, you know, working with me? And I'm like, well, I don't know. And I had told Tim and he's like, one more thing, Allison. And I'm like, <laughs> well, let's pray. Like, let's pray about this. And, you know, weighing, weighing the options. Um, and I can remember Tim saying to me one day in the kitchen, he said, you should do it. Mm. He's like, you know, that is, you are so good at everything. You love doing the caring tree. You would be such an asset. And that would, maybe that's really what God's calling you to do instead of starting your doctorate. So here I am. Wow. Um, so here I am. And I feel like um, I just, being at the church so much more, I feel like my girls are so, um, are able to see us and the, the phone calls that we're on, I think I was joking with you when I needed to call Kenya to book a, a hotel room for the, the uh, Kenya mission trip. And I'm like, guys, I have to call Kenya. Um, but before that, we had to watch some YouTube videos. Who's about Kenya? No, 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 it's a country. It's a country. It's been going. Exactly, like this is, you know, and they've learned so much, but even back to a smaller scale of yeah. just, even um, before you're on staff though, they would, how would all those cutting angels together? Like, yes. why are we doing this more? Right. right, and I think that that's, you know, or even just that, hey, we gotta be early to church because um, we're serving right. um, in the nursery or whether it was serving, you know, um, in chapel kids and recently just hosting VBS and yeah. what, um, oh, yeah. just seeing yeah. them as like, that we are the hands and feet um, yep. and what a great, opportunity that was. I think I was telling you too that we didn't have any Bible Chapel kids at our house yeah, for you VBS. you really had all community. We had all community and for them to say, hey, those comings are, there's something different about them. Right. Um, and I think that just wanting to love on our neighbors and yeah. loving on, that's what we're called to do. Yep. Um, so it's not always a church showing mm -hmm. up at 915, but really um, exuding Christ in our neighborhood too. Right. Like I think that is um, right. so important. And like you said, we're we're on this, do we do travel soccer? It's on Sundays. Yeah. Um, right. And it's a huge blessing that we have a five o'clock option on Saturdays. Yeah. Um, but that's where Mr. Cummings is a hard, church is not <laughs> church is not an option. Um, and like we even mm. said too, they're half almost halfway out of our house. Yep. And if we're not gonna put this foundation in them, What's then gonna happen the when world, independent? the yeah. world will have more of a say than we do. So good. So a couple of things from what you just shared. Uh, one is I often, now I'm in the middle of it with you, but I'm the product of parents who are faithful with their boys, being in church, family devotions, where at times I, th my parents could have thrown in the towel because we were, we were not the kids who were like, we can't wait for church, or who weren't punching each other during devotions. <laughs> and I always say, you got to look at the long-term benefits of present obedience. Yep. So as you're being obedient now as parents, you're ingraining your kids' priority of church, you're getting them in the word, you're showing them what it means to not just attend church, but serve the church, be part of the body. It might be years down the road, your daughters, we've been talking about faith, where they're at college or they're married, and all of a sudden they're made with the choice with their kids. And they're like, you know what? I grew up in a home where we made this a priority. We're gonna do the same. You know what? It was ingrained in me. My, we always did caring tree and I feel like we need to serve. Like it's just part of what my parents ingrained in me. Like yeah. we're praying God does that of his work by his spirit. Yeah. Um, so not only is it a blessing for your girls to see what you and Tim have done already, but we're praying that really takes fruit later on. Yeah, absolutely. On. And I think as, as a caring tree plug, um, we there yeah. is a place for everyone, whether you, um, we have amazing volunteers that say, you know, I. Uh, it's not me to stand at a table and 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 accept gifts. You know, I'm physically. Some people are physically not able to, but they right. will drive to the church and come and and cut out, pick up angels to cut out. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing how it's just something as simple. If, if you don't feel like you want to be the the face, yeah, you still have the heart. Um, that's something that Caring Tree. You know, Amen. we have people cutting out angels all year round, and we use every single one of them. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's so humbling to see. It's it's amazing to and see. And I love just even the opportunity too, like you said, like that's even just 
doing that as a family, coming and picking a, yeah. an angel off the and tree shopping and shopping. For them. Yeah. Exactly. And praying for those people. You know, we say that one of the biggest things is praying for that person on there. You might it might not have a name for right. privacy sake. Um, but we just think that that is such a ministry, especially during such a busy season of wanting and all yep. the commercials and yep. you know, all of the consumerism yep. uh, that we really feel like it's a way that families can easily give back. To give um, focus to the giving. Yeah, absolutely. A reflection of what God gave us through his son. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, and I love, you know, I, I love Neighborhood VBS. We do that as well. And it really transitions your mind and your kid's mind on what is the home for. Yes, it's develop us as a family, but it's also a mission. Yeah. And open up your home for your kids to see all these kids come into your house, sharing Jesus with them. Man, what and a that, what a what a memory! Yeah, and that commandment: love your neighbor yes. as yourself. You know those yep. days. You know those days are long. <laughs> there are those. You know the two hours feels like a marathon. And uh, it I is, can't, Kristen, more than me. Yeah, but yes, I agree. It I'm, is. I'm usually the end of week cleanup guy. Yeah, but a hundred percent, hundred percent. It's amazing. It is. And watching your kids get all excited. Oh, we're still singing up. the songs. Yeah, and ready for everybody to come to their house. Yeah. All right, I got one final question for you. All right, so it's. Uh, it's kind of a broad one. I start out broad with your history and now this one. But you are one, like I said, if you if you know Allison, she is smiling and energized in the church. So say someone came up to you in the lobby and said, Allison, I always see you smiling and energized in our church. What allows you to live that way? How would you respond to someone uh, who, if they asked you that question? Well, we, we got one shot at this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We got one shot at this answer, I guess, as mm -hmm. well as one shot at this life. Um, mm -hmm. With recently losing uh, Tim's dad unexpectedly, uh, we just realized that, and before that, we just realized that we have one shot at this. Let's go full throttle. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like we said, the time is fleeting with our kids being in our home. And yeah. if we're not showing this now, we don't wanna have regret. Yeah. There is absolutely, we mm -hmm. don't want to live with regret that we didn't teach them a certain thing or that we haven't modeled. Yeah. This is how to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, and it's one race. Yeah. We've got one race and looking forward to hearing, well done, good and faithful mm -hmm. servant is something that drives that drives us right. to be yep. the hands and feet. Wow, I love that. One shot at this life and man, <laughs> If you just approach every day, I got one shot in these 24 hours to live yeah. for the Lord, have the joy of the Lord, impact my kids. If that day I'm at work, impact those at my 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 job, my community. Man, let's not waste it. Yeah, and, and that doesn't mean it will be joy. easy every day. No, right? There has been times that Mrs. Cummings, I know Faith might not believe it, <laughs> but Mrs. Cummings may not be, <laughs> love is patient, love is kind at home, but we get through um, and, Right. Can do it because of Jesus. Amen. Well, I think of, you know, when we, as we wrap up and I just reflect on our time together in this podcast, I think, I think you're a great example of so many things regarding the joy of the Lord. One is you don't have to have a perfect family picture background to have a perfect relationship with your heavenly father and to find your joy in him and in his, in our savior. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I praise God that he grabbed your life at a young age, he used your mom to do that. Um, Cause who knows where Allison would have ended up if she never had Jesus at a young age, if she didn't so have true. that youth group at a young age. So true. Praise God that you and Tim are of one accord of serving the Lord together and demonstrating that to your girls. And I think, uh, you know, our joy we have with the Lord is impacted by the people we surround ourselves with. Right. So do you have healthy relationships? Do you have those around you who are gonna actually point you not to the pessimism of this world, yeah. but the optimism of Christ that we should have every day in that joy? And just your commitment to serve, I think it's going to be a theme. And I love how somehow, you know, we didn't plan this, this podcast series is running pretty much in line with a series we're doing on unity where it's so focused on serving together, unified together. And I'm seeing you and John early on in this series it's so natural that those who serve and use their gifts and are involved in the church start to exude a natural joy that comes yeah. from obedience, that yeah. comes from that intimacy with the Lord. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's and, amazing. and I think there's so many opportunities here. Yes. Um, and we love raising our ch children in this church. Um, yeah. I feel so blessed that we have the opportunity that I didn't when I was younger um, to, yeah. to have that and that you 
allow people to serve with their families. Amen. That's the greatest part is, you know, it's not that, oh, your kids can't be standing in the lobby with you because like they are part, again, showing them the hands and feet and mm. we just provide, so, the Bible Chapel does an excellent job at giving those opportunities. Wow, we're, we're a blessed church because of Christ, stick to his word, and he's given us amazing people like uh, the Cummings crew. So I'm assuming you can always use help with carrying tree and we other can. items. So if you, we can. if you listen to this podcast, like I like this Allison, sister let me reach out there they'll take your help as yes, carrying tree we would tree. love it we it's almost like it. some of our outreach i always say vbs is a 24 7. like yeah. we have a workshop down here that's going yes. every year right <laughs> and same thing with all their outreaches carrying tree is now yep. let's get ready for that next year so uh you can always reach out to them she now is probably connected with outreach at biblechapel.org yep. yep. if you want to reach out to, to allison and get involved but uh i hope again from, from this series and this moment with Allison that you've been encouraged. Go live today with a new uh, sense of joy. Would you do that? Do that. Represent the joy of the Lord. And one way to make that more natural is get engaged with the body of Christ. Serve the Lord and watch that joy come out more in your life. So thank you, sister. Thank you. I hope you sleep tonight if thank that, you. that regular coffee we gave you. <laughs> to faithy. <laughs> to faithy, exactly. Uh, let me pray for us All as right. we wrap up. Father, I praise you and thank you for this time with Allison. I praise you for her, Tim, and the girls. I thank you for uh, their example uh, of who we desire to be as followers of you. I'm thankful for their gifting, God, their marriage, and I'm thankful for the way that Allison has led in so many ways with your joy in the church, outside of the church, in the school system, in their home, in the community, with Neighborhood VBS, Lord, and doing major, major outreach through uh, projects such as Caring Tree. I just thank you for their example. And uh, I just pray, those listening, God, we would just continue to be blessed by this series, lifted up by hearing the testimonies of our brothers and sisters that then cause us, encourage us, challenge us to live more with the joy of the Lord each day. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and looking for a home church, we want to invite you to visit us this weekend. You can click the link in the description and show notes for more information. If you want to join us online, you can visit BibleChapel.org. We can't wait to connect with you. It's a brand new day. Hey. Wake up every morning and say it's